What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? So we are back at Copart. And it's not often I do this, but the auction is literally today. For you guys, it'll be yesterday. Um, but the auction is literally today. And I found this not really something... Uh, I mean, this will be for Weird Beard Auto Sales, but this is something that I think we could maybe do a little work on. I had another one I'll show you guys that I really wanted because it needed a lot more work than this. This, to me, at first glance, looks like it needs a headlight, a hood, and a bumper. Um, the fog light is still down there. The fender, I think, can be bent back out. The hood, if I paid somebody, could probably be straightened out, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to go through all that. There may be some damage underneath we need to pull out, but most of this is really thin metal. It can be hammered out pretty easily. So this is a, uh, I don't even remember what year this is, like an 03, something no, like that. Two or three, I believe. Yeah, I think this is an 02 or an 03 X5, right? It's got 143,000 miles on it. And other than that little ding in the front, you know, she's a, she's a clean vehicle. We got John here today. You guys remember John? He's the one that came out and did all that work on the bins for us. He's helped us out a lot. So here's what makes this one unique, in my opinion. This is a stick shift. Let's turn that off. 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 That needs to go off. I don't know how you turn this off. There we go. Boom. Got it. <laughs> so don't let the shifter conf uh, confuse you. This is not an M anything, but someone did put an aftermarket uh, M Sport uh, shift handle on it. But yeah, okay. But anyway, yeah, it's a it's a it's a stick shift. And I thought that was kind of cool. Four wheel drive BMW stick shift. Uh, it's got a lot of buttons, and it's you know it's got a like a flip down DVD player back here. I don't even know if it works or yeah. Look at that. How about that? Let's go back here and take a look. I can't tell yeah, if that, I can't I don't tell think if that it power works. can't tell if that power light's illuminated or not. No. Yeah. Oh, there, there it goes. Go. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a TV. Yeah, there's auxiliary inputs. You can put your PlayStation in here. Which hey, for 2002. <laughs> That's this is pretty big, bad. This is big time for 2002. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, this is nice. It's got decent tires. I wouldn't go so far as say the tires are good. Uh, the tires are acceptable. They'll work. Um, the seat reclines and goes forwards with the push of a button right here. I don't know how to open this thing. That button right there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And for when you're carrying your heavy stuff in your BMW X5. Or if you're just too damn lazy to pick up your groceries and sit them. Man, this would be great for hauling engines. There you go. Someone already had oil on it. So. Yeah, it's already dirty. And I like this. I really do. And the price on it right now is really, it's nothing for what this thing is. The price is sitting at like $425. And it runs just, uh, listen how quiet this is. She runs like a top and I'll bet she drives great. I, I want it. I was looking for something that I could like do some rebuilding work on because some of you have said, da, 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 you're not actually rebuilding anything on your channel, Randy. You're just flipping cars. And you're right, I am. And the channel is auto auction rebuild. So I understand you guys want to see me actually tear into something. I've torn into cars before. Most of you are so new that you haven't seen those videos. You can always look back and find them on my channel. But uh, you're right. We need to find something to rebuild and we need to do it soon. So I'm on the prowl for something to rebuild, but it's got to be something that I'm not going to go. So I don't mind going upside down. I don't mind losing money on a rebuild just to do a rebuild for you guys. But a lot of the stuff I'm looking at is older, you know, money, that, that, that thing called money, you know, <laughs> we're not, we're not quite to the point where I can afford to just buy anything yet, but we'll get there. I got to find something that's economically feasible to, to purchase and rebuild and still hopefully make a little something off of if we, if we can even sell it. Um, so we're going to work on that, but let me show you next what I was going to buy to rebuild, but unfortunately it's, it's going a little too high for what it is. Let's go look at it. Here goes the X5. Bid limit exceeded. Sold on approval. Wow. 
All right, so this is not the one I was looking at to rebuild for you guys. I couldn't afford this if my life depended on it. I think this thing's up to about 17 grand right now. But take into consideration this car is 40 plus thousand dollars. If, a lot of you may not know what this is. This is a Kia Stinger GT. And I know 40 plus thousand for a Kia is uh, <laughs> Sounds like a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of money for a Kia. <laughs> I don't really know the specs on this, but from what I've heard, it's a ridiculous car. Like it's it, it's a ridiculous sedan, man. And this is not your uh, this is not what you would expect from an old Kia. All right, this is a much more premium sedan. And it's weird that it's a sedan. I would have really expected something something this loaded to be a a coupe, especially with the performance numbers that I've heard about online. Like I said, I don't specifically know the specs on this. I just know it's an expensive ass Kia with a turbo 6. And if you're wondering why this is here, hell, I'm not a I'm not 100% sure what's wrong with it either. It says it's got undercarriage damage. You can see the bumper's been opened up for the tow hook right there. So it's been towed. But I don't know. I don't know. I looked under it. I saw a few scrapes, you know, but this thing sits so low to the ground, it's really difficult to see exactly what happened. I will uh, fire this up for you real quick. But I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to sit around and play with this car too long or rev it or anything like that. It's not my car. I'm not going to do anything to screw it up. Yeah, that didn't uh, that didn't sound particularly good, did it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it sounds like an exhaust leak from underneath the car. But anyway, I wanted to show this to you because it's not every day you get a chance to check out a Kia Stinger. And I just thought this was an awesome car. Let me see if I can find the key fob. I want to show this to you guys. Yeah, check this out. Here's the key fob, right? It's got like a little trigger for locking it. Look, the mirror folds in. John Travolta, remember, ain't it cool? All right, I like that. It's a clean car, clean car. But uh, we can't afford this, so let's move on to something else. All right, here's the Stinger. I had to throw this one on here because I know some of you are gonna wanna know what this thing goes for. This is on reserve, so it's not a pure sale yet. Here we go. It's about to go to pier. You'll see where it says on reserve. As soon as that reserve is met, this will flip over to pier sale. There it goes. Reserve is hit. She sold. Whatever it sells for, that's the winning bid right there. This is a steal, guys. 12,000 miles on her. $40,000 car for 16 grand. And it's a... I, Wow. Wow. All right, so this is the one that I was going to try to do a rebuild on for you guys. And she needs uh, she needs a little bit of work, but I've since decided this is not a good option. So this is Airmatic. This is an E500. And I really, I, I, like I said, I don't know European cars, man. I didn't even know they made an E500 at all. I knew they made like an E320, E350. I did not know they actually put a V8 in these. And I thought, wow, that would be fun to own. But the Airmatic is sitting all the way down. That's normal. You see this all the time in Mercedes when they sit for any real length of time. The car just kind of falls on its face here. But this tire is completely blown out. So automatically need to tire this rim, we don't know. Uh, the rim may be good, uh, the rim may not be good. So you have to buy this considering you might have to put a rim on this. Definitely gotta put a tire on it, definitely gotta put a fender on it. And realistically, the bumper is broken in so many places. Like, it's broken here, someone stitched it. <laughs> they stitched it right there, they stitched it right there. So the bumper's broken here, the bumper's broken here. You really need to put a bumper on it. You need a driver's side fender. You need a passenger side fender, and the worst part is this thing doesn't have a key. So uh, John said that it's about 300 and 
350 or so? 320, 350 is the last key I had to get. All right, so you're looking off the bat because there's no key. And the fact that the Airmatic has this thing sitting on this front tire is going to make it more difficult to tow. So obviously it can't be driven. We're going to have to pay extra for a tow because they're going to be upset about that. Um, and this thing's already at 625. And John looked up the service history on it. And I think, a, what, a year ago? Just over a year? 2016. Okay, so 2016, the thing had 177,000 miles on it. So it's probably sitting at over 200,000 miles now. Um, I thought this would be a fun project to rebuild. I, I really did. But it's not just, they, this stuff is this stuff is easy to fix. It's no big deal. But you guys want to see me put some work in. I figured I'd buy something, put some work in. But uh, if this thing's got like 200,000 miles on it, I just don't see it being worth it. To be honest, if we got... The, the head, what are, not the headrest. <laughs> Some visors are held with rubber bands, man. It's this kind of stuff. We got headliner falling off here. It, when I see someone rigging up a Mercedes like this, it really makes me question if they took care of it or not. You know, if you're holding up your sun visor with rubber bands in a Mercedes, then chances are you didn't take very good care of it. And uh, I can handle the aesthetics, but, you know, for a car that... I don't know, what do you think this thing is worth? I mean, with a salvage title, it's going to be rebuilt, so that's going to... Salvage title, 200000 I mean... 2000 bucks tops? I, I say 15 yeah, 15 Yeah. I mean... Yeah, so you're talking about... And these parts aren't going to be cheap. You know, we might be able to find these at... A, I mean, the, these work with the E320, the E350, the... What else? Well, the E500, obviously. Yeah. So you can find these parts, but I looked on carpart.com. No. None. No fender no bumper nothing and on ebay they're wanting like 300 bucks plus 200 shipping for a bumper it's like get out of here man that's not going to happen forget about it yeah. no no you know and you're talking about 625 plus fees this thing's already approaching a thousand dollars out the door 350 for a key there's no money like and i like i said i don't mind losing a little bit of money you know to do a build on here for you guys or a repair i should say not really a build but a repair but like this this one i'd be so far upside down it'd be ridiculous so we're gonna skip this Let's move on. This one I think is just interesting. It's just an old automatic Subaru Impreza, but this th these cars tell a story, and I really shouldn't be taking the time to do this with you guys right now because the auction's about to start, and I've got cars to look at, man, but you're getting like a bonus Copart walk around. So let's figure out what happened. We're going to play a game. Like, Let's figure out what do you think happened to this car. We'll start with the wires. All right, obviously it had a flat, and it ripped all the wires out of the car. But let's walk around to the windshield. What do you think, I have my suspicions, what do you think caused this damage right here? Yeah, I bet you guys already know. Then we got a flat tire right here too. What do you think the chances are? Now I'm gonna tell you my, my theory here. I think Crazy Baby Mama came out with a baseball bat. Whack! But, Crazy Baby Mama also stuck a knife through this tire. Crazy Baby Mama also stuck a knife through this tire. Poor helpless baby daddy is sitting in the car fearing for his life. He probably, see we got a dent up here? He probably ran over Baby Mama. I think he just ran her over. She flew over the car. And he's flying down the road trying to get away when he blows his tire to shreds, at which point, you know, eats up the inner fender liner and, you know, wraps the steel belt of the tire around the wiring harness. He proceeds to stop moving on the road, which point baby mama is limping, hopping behind the car, chasing after it. She catches him. Do we have any blood in the car? <laughs> oh, no blood. I, I think he's all right. I think, I think poor helpless baby daddy made it out the car just fine. What do you think happened? Comment below. All right, so just so you guys know that I'm not screwing with you, I'm trying to find a rebuild project for you. This one was one that is on my watch list. And I was like, all right, this would be a good one. It's got keys. To me, in the pictures, you know, the pictures didn't really show everything. That's why it's important to come out to Copart and check this stuff out for yourself. But to me, it looked like it wasn't going to be that bad. But let's take you, I mean, it didn't take me more than like 10 seconds. Here's your frame rail. All right, and this is pushed that way. This is supposed to be like over here. <laughs> All right, it is pushed sideways. It's bent down. 
Uh, you could see under there, maybe you could see under there, the radiator, everything is just crumpled, bent. Um, so this has got significant frame damage over here. This one sheared off. This one sheared off? Yeah. You can see right back here where it broke. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the frame rail on this one literally snapped off. I don't know if you can see that down there. Right there, it's just, <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, yeah. And I looked up the price of headlights. Headlights on this for a pair uh, are like 600 bucks for aftermarket ones. This is not a cheap car to put back together. So uh, yet again, it's just, it's just not worth the repair. Even when you do it yourself, it just isn't worth it. Nice car though, nice car. Smells, smells, smells bad. Yeah. It smells like something is dead. It doesn't smell pleasant. It's not. It's not that rich leathery smell. It's no. The, what the hell is that smell? This is a uh, cadaver in the trunk. That's the hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get, I'm just joking. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Listen, guys. If you're gonna bid on a car at Copart, come out to the lot and look at these things yourself. Trust me, come and look for yourself. All right, here's another one. This is an old Civic, like a 2002 Civic. It's a coupe, this is the EX. So EX is loaded, that means it's got the sunroof and power windows and power locks and yada, 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 yada. It's a good looking car. Good looking car, it's got really good tires. The tread on these tires is just, looks like it's got practically brand new tires on it yes it does have an issue it was hit right here so we've got some damage to this quarter now i'm not even sure this is worth really fixing but i'm thinking because of how thin this metal is i'll bet mike could put some work into this and pull this out to where it looks better than it is now i don't think this car is worth like going through trouble of fixing this whole panel or cutting and replacing and welding and painting it ain't worth all that this is a maybe a 2000 2200 car on the lot so it's not worth all that but maybe he could do something to pull this out a little bit make it look better the tire looks like it survived the tire looks like it came out okay uh definitely probably try to find a hubcap for it would be nice oh yeah but the rest of the car looks great and the interior on this thing is just look at this this is such a clean car. I mean, it smells good. It looks good. It's got 150,000 miles on the dash. There are no warning lights on. I haven't tried the air conditioning yet, but I'll bet you the air conditioning is ice cold too. I just heard the compressor kick on. Oh, it's on hot. Yeah, it'd help if I turned it to cold, wouldn't it? Yeah, cold air conditioning. I don't know what this is, a little cubby hole, yeah. This is a nice little car, nice little car. And she fired right up, we didn't even need a jump start. Just put the key in it and listen to that. Yeah, this, this is a good car, good car. Show you the engine real quick and we gotta get out of here because the auction starts at noon and it's literally uh, like noon. So if I'm gonna put a bid in, I'm gonna have to get on it there she is like it doesn't even look like the valve cover gasket's leaking like this thing is this this thing is in great shape all right here comes our civic Sold. let's see if we win it nope we're not gonna win that one either i just can't go over this amount you know really can't you're talking about a car that's only worth 2000 maybe 2200 and now you're sitting at almost $1,000 plus fees. You know, this will be a $1,300, $1,400 car. There's just not enough profit margin there. Wow. I can't believe I lost the X5. Like, I'm really upset. I, I've got $4,200 in bidding power on here, and I had 15 on the Trailblazer and 825 on the Civic and we were only at a thousand bucks on the X5 and it wouldn't let me bid anymore. Said I was out of bidding power and there's no way that could have been correct. Oh well though, you know, another day, another car, right? Yeah, look at this, this is, this is insane. Like good deal for the insurance company, but there's, there's no way, there's no way I would bid on this car $1,200, you're talking about an easy $1,400, $1,500 out the door now. Easy $1,400, $1,500 out the door. 
There's not enough profit margin there. All right, here goes the trailblazer. How does it say I'm outbid when we bid 15? Okay, it must just be confused because we got 1500 on this one. There we go, there we go. This is doing it automatically. We'll see what happens. But this is on approval, so even if we win, we still may not win. I think we're gonna win this one. At least from the bidding aspect anyway. Shoot. And we are outbid. Oh man. Put another bid in. I don't want to risk losing it over fifty dollars. You've got to be kidding me. Bonus. Oh, you. <laughs> we can't go any higher than this, man. We just can't. Sold on approval. All right, now we sit back and wait. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna end with this one and you'll have to stay tuned for another video to see what we won. What do you think about this? This is uh, a fire. I don't think we've ever bought a fire car before. She looks good, right? Miles unknown, but there, like what is going on here? It's so weird because the fire is in the front, right? You see this? The fire is up here. Like what would cause a fire up here? Now I can understand if it was back towards the engine or closer to the battery, but something caught on fire like right by where the grill is. Now obviously I haven't looked at this car. I don't know anything about it other than what we're seeing right here. Now there's the burn damage and it looks like the engine is fine. It literally just looks like the coolant reservoir and the cooling fan. This might be worth this might be worth bidding on. And if you look over here, you see it's at 275 bucks on approval, so Yeah. I'm down, man. I'm down. Let's bid on this bad boy. But if you want to find out what we won, um, because some of this stuff is on approval. We're not going to know if we get it or not. Um, it's just going to be a wait till tomorrow type thing. If you want to find out what we want, you're going to have to come back for another video because this video is long enough. You got a, an extra co-part walk around this week, so I don't want to hear any complaining. You got two co-part walk arounds this week. Um, we're going to get out of here. I appreciate you guys taking time to watch. Stay tuned for what we won, if we win anything. I, I, even I don't know yet. Uh, give this video a big thumbs up. I appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, watch this video, and uh, man, I'm excited. I'm I'm hoping we can we can win something. Really hoping we can actually win something because the car lot has uh, no cars left. Everything is sold, so we need to uh, we need to get some more stuff. And I think that Lincoln will be a fun project for uh, you guys and and me to uh, you know see if we can put it back together, get it running. Should be interesting. If if if. You're gonna bid on cars from Copart, and you can find some good deals if you take your time. Don't get into a pissing contest with anyone to try to show you got more money than someone else. Keep a level head, go to the Copart lot, check out the cars in person. Don't do what I do. Don't just see cars and bid on them and buy them. That's, that's not smart. It's just the way I do things, and I'm pretty lucky most of the time. So don't do it the way I do. Go to Copart, look at the cars yourself in person, check them out. Don't bid more than you should bid on and keep your head level. You'll be good to go. I'm going to do a video in the future explaining some of the things about Copart for you guys. I want to give a big shout out to John, uh, Jessica, uh, Weird Beard, Mike Weird Beard Auto Sales, and Copart, of course, for letting us go out there and do these videos. Stay tuned for the next one or one of the next ones where we'll go over if we want anything.
I don't know. This will be interesting. I got to get to bidding on this next car that you guys uh, aren't going to get to see in this video. Stay safe out there, buddy. I'll catch you soon in the next one.